Hey YouTube, Kevin Cleary with the Knife Video. I uh, want to have a bit of a serious discussion with you today and, I, and I'm going to make some recommendations here because this is one of the things that I know a lot of people at least have some interest in. Uh, I want to talk about a knife that's in a, in a conflict, okay? What knives are suitable for that, what you would look for in a knife that uh, you're planning to, that may be used as a weapon of some kind, okay? Um, there are lots of people who, who have that need. If you're law enforcement of some branch, if you are in the military and you're being deployed, uh, if you are private security, uh, maybe you, you know, a lot of viewers are in the U.S., maybe you have a concealed carry weapon permit and you want a knife to serve as sort of firearm backup or as firearm protection, okay? Um, so there are lots of legitimate reasons to care about this. By the way, if you're in Canada and you're watching this, it is not legal for us in Canada to carry a weapon for self-defense. Any weapon, okay? So I couldn't carry a sharpened pencil, you know? If I if a police officer pulled me over and I had this sharpened, he said, oh, what are you doing with the sharpie? And I said, oh, I, you know, I've trained so that I can use this as a weapon. I'm not sure how good a weapon it would be, but the police officer would say, that's a no-no. You couldn't have that Sharpie if it's being carried for the purpose of, as a weapon, okay? Uh, now you can carry tools, and that's what a knife is. It's a useful tool, um, and it's a tool that in a dire situation, okay, which is the only legitimate time to use a knife as a weapon, uh, because a knife could end someone's life. So unless your life is threatened, you don't want to be le bringing the level of, of danger up to that point, unless it's appropriate. Um, but if if you you know had a knife on you or some other tool, right? If you had a hammer on you, if you had a crowbar on you, and you were assaulted, uh, and you use that weapon to defend yourself, you would be under a burden to prove that the situation dictated that response. Okay, and that's the same for police uh, as well. They're they're held to, held to that standard as well. They have to prove if they use their gun or their baton or something else, a taser, that that was an appropriate response to the situation that they were facing. And that that requires that they believe their life is threatened, okay? And same with you and I. Uh, so that's the first thing. Get that legal stuff out of the way. Next, I, though, I want you to think about this. This is probably the scariest thing that we'll talk about in this video, okay? You take a knife like this, that blade is long and it's a very slicey blade. That thing could do a ton of damage to a human body. However, it may not do enough damage to stop an attack. Okay, and I want you to think about this. I've worked in construction, so I've seen some fairly serious injuries and I've seen people continue to function. Okay, I myself have continued to function with a nail in my hand. Uh, with a nail through my finger on one occasion. I, it went right through, taped it up, and continued working for the rest of the day. All right. Um, I know of a guy who was cutting out a window. He had a long Olfa knife. You know the ones where you slide the blade out? And he had the blade fully extended so he could cut around a window. And he had it way back, and he was trying to cut foam around a window. And it slipped out and went into his arm. And that blade was buried in his arm. That individual was able to take the blade out to wrap his arm up and drive himself to the hospital. Okay, so that's a pretty bad injury, a pretty, pretty bad wound, and yet it has not stopped that person from functioning. And so you have to think about in your mind, you know, I've got this knife and how much damage am I going to need to inflict on another individual in order to actually stop that threat. Okay, that's one of the reasons I would suggest a knife doesn't maybe make the best uh, defensive weapon. If I was walking down the street and I knew I had my knife in my pocket, but someone was coming to attack me, I would still look around to pick up a stick or a brick or a bat or something more substantial, okay? Something with a little more stopping power. Uh, so, th those are all things that kind of need to be thought through before we get to this point. And now we get to the point, well, what knife would you want? Well, the reality is I'd want the biggest, baddest one I could get my hands on, right? Uh, so, you know, this is this is more representative. I'm not saying this would be a recommendation, but this is the SCHF 52, okay? So big, heavy, you know, there's, there's lots of chopping capability here, but something like this or like the BK9 or like the, the cold steel katana machete, you know, those would all be blades that I'd go, yeah, uh, that's the one I'm going to pick, right? If you said, hey, you're going to need to defend your life, you know, 
here's the knife that you can have, or which one do you want out of these? I'd pick something big and bulky and heavy where you can do a serious amount of damage, all right? Now, the reality is we're not gonna be carrying something around like this, but I wanna put that out there that something like this, uh, or even something like this, now this is a little more practical for carry because it's folding, uh, not super practical by any means, but here's a knife that, you know, yeah, if someone said, hey, you know, something really bad, a serious threat to your life and limb could be around today, what knife are you going to bring? I'd go, yep, this will be the one. Thank you very much, right? Um, again, I know it's not that practical, but uh, something like that, or even now something like this. Uh, this is a smaller fixed blade, still, you know, five inches or so of blade, so it's a pretty, pretty substantial cutting edge. Um, but it's a fixed blade, okay? So again, uh, a little more significant in terms of uh, confidence and in terms of even reach because of that blade length. Uh, so those are those are going to be like, you know, if in a perfect situation, what blade would you want? Well, yeah, I want the biggest, toughest, baddest one that I could have. Now, to kind of step that down to a knife that you could theoretically or actually carry every day and to an... Uh, and, and to add to this one more element, a knife that would also be useful for all your other stuff. I don't really guys buy into the uh, philosophy that I've heard, never use your defensive blade for anything else. You know, so now you're gonna carry a gun, you're gonna carry a defensive blade, and you're gonna carry a utility blade. You know, the reality is if you need, you know, a knife in a defensive situation, most of that is gonna be this kind of thing. It's gonna be a stabbing type of motion and a sharpened stick will stab, okay? Uh, you know, you could break the tip off of this and still do a lot of damage to a human body by, by thrusting it at them. Okay, so yeah, there is gonna be some thrusting. The other thing I should say about this is as we look at some of these knives that I'm gonna kind of show you in a few minutes, um, if you have specific training, well, obviously, or possibly at least, that training could be around a particular style of, of knife or knife fighting. So maybe what you what you need to carry if you've been trained is a karambit, right? Or maybe something that's specifically designed for uh, reverse. So something like this where you see how the blade is designed to be canted out so that in a reverse grip, you've still got a lot of reach. Uh, there are a lot of fighting knives that are designed that way. And so if you've been trained to use that, then obviously that's what you need to use. I'm kind of thinking of a person who uh, it's it's last ditch, uh, they're in real trouble, and man, luckily I just happen to have my pocket knife and what can I do with it? Okay, so now you're gonna be doing very simple slashing motion, maybe some stabbing. Um, but again, remember that, that that cutting, you're gonna have to do a lot of cutting in order to actually stop an attacker. Remember that back when they had knife fights or when they had duels with swords, a lot of times both parties would die because yeah, you may you know strike the, the coup de gras and really do some serious damage in one foul swoop. But if that doesn't literally stop them in their tracks, you could still be fighting for five minutes and who knows what can happen, how much damage that individual could do to you within that five minutes, okay? So uh, those are all kinds of things to think about while we're working through this. So now that we've got down to a more realistic level and knives that we could actually use and carry, there are some things I think I would look for, okay? Uh, I would look for a knife that has a very positive grip. I want to really be locked in. This is a Zero Tolerance Zero 0200. Uh, I want to be locked in. I want there to be no possible way that I could drop this or lose it. It can't be slipping around in my hand. I have to be very, very confident about my hold on that blade, okay? So that's one of the things you're gonna look for. And lots of knives have that. Uh, the Zero 0200, yes. The Manix 2 XL, yes. Uh, the 0560, yes, uh, Cold Steel Recon 1, yep, absolutely, um, even the uh, the Broken Skull, very, very heavily textured G10 there. So again, you want a knife that the handle is really, really positive, really locks you in. Um, one thing that can be different, both are legitimate options, uh, but a knife like this, this is the Spyderco Military, it's very thin, very slicey. This thing cuts like crazy, okay? So is that an advantage in a combat situation? Well, sure it is. However, because that's a little thinner, it's going to be, you know, yeah, that's going to slice pretty well, it's going to stab pretty well, but there is a chance of breaking this particular knife. Now, if it breaks uh, and, and it's the thing that saves your life, great. Uh, you know, obviously you'd be 
uh, more than willing to make that trade-off. Yeah, my knife broke, but I'm still alive. Um, but if it broke when when you really needed it and you the conflict wasn't over yet, maybe you would have wished you had something with a more substantial blade like the 0560. Uh, I will say the Recon 1 kind of lands in this middle ground between all of that. It is a very slicey blade, but it's also fairly strong uh, and capable. Uh, another thing that you may think about, something like this, the Cold Steel Swift. Now the blade length here is the shortest I think of anything I've shown you. Pretty well everything I've got here is four inch in blade length. This is only 3.5 and so obviously one of the recommendations I'm gonna make is uh, why not, since there are tons of knives that have a four inch blade that are easy to carry, if it's if it's a life or death situation, I want all the reach I can get, right? Uh, especially if he's got a knife too, I want him as far away from me as possible. So I want this thing way out here in front, keeping everybody away. Now, there is a, another thought here, and I think all of these knives, what have we all looked at? We've looked at a number of different blades. I think they're all, um, they're all functional. One of the things you need to think about a little bit is that it may be that in your situation, you're not gonna present that knife, okay? You're not gonna take it out and say, hey, get away from me, you know, I've got a knife. You're gonna keep that knife, maybe it's open, but maybe it's, you know, it's up concealed like this. You don't want them to know you've got it until it's too late, okay? And this is, you know, if you're elderly, if you're sick, if you're injured, if there's some physical limitation that's going to stop you from being able to um, physically handle the person who's assaulting you, then they don't need to know you've got a knife, right? Uh, as James Williams said in one of his discussions about this, uh, in a lot of cases, a knife is the kind of tool that should only ever be felt, okay? Should never be seen, only felt. And certainly, you know, when I talked to my wife about this, I said, yeah, if you were ever in that situation where it was that dire, uh, yeah, don't let the guy know you've got a knife until it's too late, until it's, you know, sticking out the back of his head, then that's fine. Um, Again, difficult thing, and in each situation, you would have to judge how you're going to handle that, right? If I'm, you know, if I'm getting, if I'm, you know, fighting multiple attackers, or if, you know, the guy is 300 pounds and, and seven feet tall and, and bulletproof, uh, yeah, I'm not going to let that guy know that I've got a knife until he's right on top of me, and then it's going to go right up inside of his rib cage, right? Uh, that's one of those things that, and so again, uh, that's a situation that you've got to think through at the time. But, I, but in, again, in that situation, I'm still going to want as much blade length as I can have. I'm still going to want that very positive grip. I'm going to want a very secure lock. Okay, and so the knives that I've shown you all meet those characteristics. You've got grip that is very positive, that I'm not worried about dropping it. I'm not worried about it slipping. I'm not worried about, uh, you know, it, uh, my fingers coming up onto the blade. I'm not worried about not being able to hold on to this and my opponent getting a hold of it, right? Those are all things that relate to the ergonomics of the knife. Uh, and then I need to know something about how I'm gonna utilize this blade. Now there are other videos and I'll, I'll let you watch those, but there are a few videos out there that talk about for, a, for a, a novice, someone who's not trained in knife fighting, what can you do with a knife? And it's, it's one of the two options that I've given you. Either you're gonna present it and you're gonna say, hey, stay away from me, or you're going to keep it hidden, right? So that it's here, but you can't tell until I need it. Uh, you're gonna keep it hidden until the very last possible moment until you have no other option, and then it's gonna come into play, okay? Um, that's a decision you'll have to obviously make. But I think a number of blades, and I don't have every good defensive knife in existence, right? That's not even possible. But I tried to give you a few different examples here of knives that I think would fit, of knives that would do the job. There are certainly some that would do better if you watch the Zabo video, uh, Spederko Zabo and uh, the Otanashi no Ken. That's another great, purely defensive blade, okay? Um, those are, those are good options as well. Zero 0300, Cold Steel Tawar, Cold Steel Spartan. You know, there's a bunch of knives out there that are totally suitable. I just don't have them all. Uh, but what I've shown you so far are knives that uh, have a very positive grip, have lots of blade, I'm gonna want as much reach as possible, as I've said, and are fairly confidence inspiring in terms of the lockup. Okay, I don't want a Swiss Army knife, right? I want something with a really good trustworthy lock that I'm not gonna have to worry about. So there you go, guys, that's my thinking, and those are some of my recommendations on 
uh, defensive knives. The reality is, in any and all circumstances where you can get out of that conflict, just run away. Okay, we're not a bunch of you know ninjas running around ready to you know just throw down with anybody who who uh, who looks crosswise at us. Um, if you're carrying a knife, especially, you need to understand that that should never ever come into play in a conflict unless your life is threatened. And even then, if there's a way to get around it, uh, you want to do that. Okay, because the ramifications of making that choice are very, very high, okay? The, the consequences are, you know, think about it this way. You could either be dead or something else pretty bad, but not as bad as dead, right? <laughs> so that's that's the kind of trade-off you, you want to be making. You don't want to be like, well, this, this I could take a beating here. Then take a beating, right? You, you, unless it's your own life or the life of your loved ones or someone else that's at risk, you don't want to get into this kind of a situation. But I did want to put this video out there, making some recommendations of knives that I think are appropriate for, you know, self-defense, for firearm backup, for, you know, soldiers or law enforcement or whatever who are in a situation where they're going to need something substantial uh, that can serve as a weapon at some point. Hope you enjoyed the video. Love to hear your comments below, uh, especially if you have any stories about this kind of thing happening or any recommendations, or maybe you're a soldier. Maybe you've been trained in edge weapons. I'd love to hear some comments below. Thanks a lot, and we'll talk to you soon.